How's it going, everybody? Brian Elvers and Dave Meltzer here, Wrestling Observer Radio. It is September 5, 2022, figure4online.com slash wrestlingobserver.com. How was your trip? <laughs> How was the trip? How was your trip long? Oh, man. Long day. Yep. You know, I, I, uh, we didn't talk about this, but I did have a match on Friday. And uh, I was very stressed out about it, and I was very... Uh, I was excited, but I always have a lot of pressure, and I was so excited to have it be done and be able to spend Saturday watching the WWE show and be able to spend Sunday watching the AW show. Well, and you, then, did do, you did get to do that. Well, and then sit in the airport on Monday and write my Sports Illustrated column and have some nice food and relax and wait for my flight. You, you did get some nice food. <laughs> Dude, this weekend was not what I... It is it ne- no it ne- way. It, it never is. My match feels like it was five months ago. I did, did not have any sort of fun and exciting celebrations afterwards. It was all work. And then after the AW pay-per-view, it was more work. I went to bed at uh, about 3.45 last night. And uh, wow. I just thought, man, I'm not going to sleep. Because I didn't sleep after my match. I couldn't sleep. And then I, I got no sleep, so I was all tired Saturday. And then I did sleep Saturday so, night. So, 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 so that's why we did the show Sunday morning. Yes, I was so tired. Yeah. And then, and then Sunday night, you know, it was the same deal. I, I could not sleep. But then at about 3.45, I closed my eyes. And all of a sudden, I woke up. It was 9.15. So I, I did actually sleep, but it was only about six hours. And then all day, it was, you know, hearing from about this and about that and... Oh yeah, and, and it was sad, and it was depressing, it's, and it, 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 was, it, it was it it was it was it was really sad in a lot of ways because, um, you know, it's like I can't say I saw this coming. Okay, I no. don't think any, I don't think anyone saw this coming, but we did all know something was coming. Yes, even before even before the punk thing, it was like. It was just, I mean, you know, it was just, there's, there's, um, there were things going on and there's a lot of people who, who tried to make it worse and, and it was uh, accelerating. It was, it was, it was accelerating. And, um, I mean, it's going to be very interesting because like, as of right now, you know, just to say that all the principals involved, either I or Brian has contacted or in a roundabout way. Um, I don't say heard from because that's not really fair, but in one case, it's in one case it is just to get that side of the story out, which we'll talk about. But um, nobody's allowed to talk or wants to talk because of well, they're not allowed to talk because there's there's pending legal issues based on what happened. It is not a work at all. I mean, that is you don't have legal issues. You don't have a police officer running there. You don't have um, you know. You're not going to do whatever. It's not. It's it's not a work. That that's for sure. And let me let me say one thing before you go any further about this not a work thing because I do want to clarify something that you know a, a lot of people listened to the show yesterday and they and they heard well you know Dave and Brian weren't going to go to the scrum but then Tony really wanted them to go. Well, that's and not then really, they went and this happened. That's but not real. That's I, not I know, really but let me the truth. This. Okay, but let me explain this. There's a reason that we didn't want to go to the scrum, and the reason was the last time we went. It went well over an hour, and we didn't get back to actually do our work until very, very late in the evening. And there there really was nothing that happened that was all that important. So we decided if it's going to be this long, it's not worth it to go. The reason I believe that Tony asked us to go had nothing to do with anything that happened because he didn't know what was going to happen. The reason he wanted us to go... Well, he didn't really... it's, it's, It's like... He didn't. He didn't ask. Me. Okay, that, that's 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 okay. Because I I don't think I've told you this. Okay, so we did the interview with Tony, and it was like when the interview was over, it was just kind of like uh, you know, kind of like uh, when we're gonna see each other again, you know, like it's kind of like um, you know, and and I said you know we'll, we'll drop by the scrum, and that's what it was is we will drop by the scrum, and I thought, you know, we will go there. Um, you know, stay for however long. I mean, we're only going to stay for two hours because we had a show to do. But we would stay for a little while because there was something. But it, I, to even say he asked me is probably a little. On, I mean, I mean, it was more just to be social. Okay. You know, I mean, but I mean, regardless, I mean, but, but 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 also, but also because in some cases, I mean, I did think that there would be, 
you know, a, a couple of comments or something like that. And I just figured we'll stay for whatever. And, and you know, again. But my the, point, my point, yes. regardless of whether he asked you to go or not, there's a reason we stayed for this whole press conference. And the reason was. Well, once it started, they totally, we had to stay. No, they totally changed the way that they did it. They had a stopwatch there. Everybody that went up had X amount of time and then they were done. The next person came in X amount of time and they were done. And when the whole thing was over, stopwatch was there. It's like Tony has 20 minutes and he's done. This yeah. thing went boom, 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 boom. Everybody got in and everybody got out, and it was an easy press conference. That's why we stayed for the entire thing. There was no conspiracy in on it, asked to be there because something was going to happen. Like, nothing that happened, we didn't see any of that because we were there. It happened outside the press conference. If we would have been in our hotel doing the show, we would have heard the exact same thing at the exact same time. We didn't need to be there for any well, of that. We wouldn't, we wouldn't have seen the police officer. No. So for people that think, oh, it must be a work because it had, that had nothing to do with anything here. Well, it's not a work. It's it, not it, a work. it absolutely, Obviously, 100%, I is can not... I a work. I can tell you that uh, unlike, the, I mean, there's legal people involved. There's, like I said, there's a lot of legal situations involved, and it's a, and it's, it, it can be very messy. And I think that's one of the reasons why nobody in AEW is allowed to talk about it. Or, um, and and from a company standpoint, you know, um, obviously nobody from the company has talked about it. They're going to have to at some point. Um, address it you, you you know you can't i say that and then you know it's funny because somebody goes this, this would never happen in wwe and they start thinking back of you know the different wwe fights and like this was more out of control than most of them but over the course of you know 40 years there have been some very notable wwe fights and in most cases as far as like the big stars um i don't recall any fines or suspensions or anything like that I mean, people going like, you know, this would never happen in WWE. And and perhaps if it escalated to di this degree and it was undercard guys, which this was not, perhaps, I mean, that there there could be something. I mean, I will, again, you know, going back, I mean, I, I remember, you know, one friend of mine who was very mad. I think I've, I've told the story many times, you know, about Shawn Michaels and wanted, it's not Brett, by the way, you know, or anybody like, but you know, I, I wasn't even, you know, close to Brett at the time, but, you know, wanted, wanted to attack Shawn. And I just go, and, and again, he was not a top guy. And I said, do not do this because you will get fired. I mean, if he attacks you, you know, whatever, you know, and I don't think he was going to that, that I don't think that from a Shawn standpoint, I don't, you know, it's not like I'm saying like Sean, whatever, but but the guy was really mad at Sean for whatever reason. And um, and and he was, you know, I go like you, you will get fired over attacking him and don't do it because you're not a top guy. Now, if it's, you know, whether it's Brett and Sean or Goldberg and Jericho or, you know, whatever, you know, there's there's and there's dozens and dozens of them. Um, you know, historically, and they get out, you know, people going, WWE, they would never get out. It'd get out the next day, and it always did. And I should say always. In the 80s, maybe not as quickly because it was the 80s. Well... In the 90s, the next day, every time. Yes, okay? and, and the situation here was, when this first started, there were a small number of people in the room, and virtually immediately, there were a large number of people in the room. Yeah, people so running, running, for, running and hearing the disturbance. So, so here's what we're going to say about this, because there's a million stories going around, okay? Nobody is disputing that CM Punk punched Matt Jackson. And perhaps multiple times. Okay, but, but no one but, is disputing that there was no, at least there, a there, punch thrown that, there, there, that there Punk were, punched Matt, okay? No, okay, no Punk one is, punched Matt. Yeah, go ahead. Go no ahead. one is disputing that a steel threw a chair and hit Nick in the eye, and nobody is disputing that he uh, pulled Kenny Omega's hair and bit him. Okay, these these things are the things that it appears from both sides. Like nobody is in disagreement. the The disagreement between the two sides is that the one side claims that CM Punk threw the punch first. The Young Bucks walked, walked in, and he started punching. The other side claims that the Young Bucks stormed in and were the aggressors, and that Punk and Ace were defending themselves. Those are the two sides of the story. And depending on who you talk to, who was there, who heard what from who, you're going to hear one side of the story or the other. And, you know, okay, but, but in the interviews with, with everybody for whatever this is going to be, I mean, they're going to get everybody's side of the story 
to yeah. try to flesh out what actually happened. I will say, given that in the direct particulars would not talk, and the people who I did hear from were neutral parties, I will say that almost all had had essentially the same story, um, which was, um, and, and the same response. Um, there were people who, you know, they were not, it was not everyone, um, but it was most, most everyone. Really, in my case, in my case, it was all but, but one person who, you know, had a different version of how it started. But again, no dispute over the particulars of what happened. Um, and it's a, it's, it's a messy situation, obviously, because, you know, in, in these situations, you know, again, um, something, you know, this escalated and got pretty far. I mean, it was, an, it was, it was enough to where, I mean, nobody was hurt badly, but there were still, as, as, as far as I know, um, nobody was hurt badly, but there was stuff that happened. And there's, like I said, um, there, there are, there are witnesses there, you know, there, there were people in, in the room, um, that were not the Young Bucks, Kenny Omega, A Steel, and CM Punk. There were other people and they're all going to have to talk about it. So, um, their version of how it got started, um, is, you know, I mean, Tony is going to have to get that. I mean, and him and other people in the company, you know, the, the, you know, legal people and all that are going to have to come up with what they are going to do. It is a tricky thing because um, I know most of the talent feels a certain way. Um, and it's not, you know, I mean, like, it's, it's, just tr it's tricky because if, I mean, it's even tricky with Ace Steel. Uh, and the reason I say that is because one of the people in the room was A Steel's wife, who was there to, I guess, I mean, there because she lives in Chicago and all that, and was was just in there with him. And I think that she was also there um, tending to Larry the dog, you know, Punk's dog. Um, but she also has a broken foot. So when this is going on, she is, like, unable to move um, quickly with a broken foot, um, obviously. Or, you know, so, so that becomes like a you know dangerous situation i guess um but that was one of the people there there are other there are other people there you know it was um there were people who got there right after hearing the commotion who tried to break it up i know one person who said when he got there that there was you know it it it, it, it all the physical stuff was over but they were still yelling and screaming and you know when they asked you know it was um you know um when they when they asked, you know, they just had heard that Punk was the aggressor. But like I said, there are people who have told me that they thought that the Bucks came in. It, you know, so um, it'll like I said, there are enough witnesses and they're going to give stories. And it's tricky, like I said, because something happens to Ace. Punk's going to want to walk because Ace was there defending Punk in his mind. Um, I mean, obviously, a lot of people will go and like hitting with a chair, biting and pulling hair. What the hell is this? You know, when people panic and everything, um, shit happens. I'm not, and believe me, I'm not defending it because you're right. It never, you know, it never should have gone to that, but it did. Um, so, and, and again, like punk is a big star with the company. There are people in the company obviously who you know there's there's a lot of sentiment about punk right now that's again you know whatever people are going to say oh you know you're hearing from one side i'm actually hearing from neutral sides and the people some of the people who complain about me only hearing from one side are the quickest ones to to contact me in certain cases so um i kind of wish that they would not spread that one because it's very disingenuous and i'm kind of getting tired of it honestly um, but that will, you know, that's going to make a lot of people upset too, but fuck it. Um, 
and if something were, you know again you know what what you know that you've got you've got that but uh, does does tony want to do anything um to punk and if it, and and punk i know he was in the trainer's room i don't know the severity of anything um there's some talk that he might be hurt um i've not heard any confirmation of that if something did happen we'll probably hear that on tv wednesday if there's anything serious hopefully not um and you know so it's going to have to be sorted out but it was something that i mean i you know again there's you know you know people saw the scrum a lot of people saw the scrum a lot of people from wwe and believe me i heard from them and you know it it was not a good look for AEW. um tony's there and and punk is doing what he's doing and he's you know if you're if you're um the young bucks watching this um you know i and again i don't know what they think about anything on this one but if you are them watching this i can just say just as a normal human being would react the Tony thing is a tough one because he's he just kind of let it go. I mean, he, you know, hindsight's always twenty twenty. Um, they probably should have stopped it and nipped it in the bud, but um, I don't know exactly how you do it without it being very awkward. And it was even still watching it and being there. It was, it was quite an awkward situation. And um, uh, but it's it's going to be a real challenge because it's. Uh, there's, you know, I mean, I guess you could sit everyone down and just say, like, screw it next time or whatever. But it's it may have passed that point. And I'm afraid that that may be the case is that it passed that point. I think you maybe may have been able to do that two weeks ago when you had the meeting, you know, and, and I wished it was addressed there. And Tony did kind of address it later in the press. But... Um, and, it may, and perhaps if he had, once he did that, you know, but... Punk was, you know, he wanted to talk about about Cabana. He wanted to do it. He wanted to talk about it. Bad. He was sitting there and he was waiting and he was wanting to rip on, you know, Nick Hausman and you and. Um, yeah, and I should mention, by the way, that a lot of people saw a version of the video that didn't have the first minute or so, and so they were wondering what was the question that was asked. But there was no question. He just Punk started. sat down and Tony Khan said, "Let's go to the first question." And Punk said, "I got a question," and he went off. There was yeah. nobody asking a question about Cole Cabana. Goes, just did not start with a reporter asking anything about Cabana. Nobody said anything. Punk no. started all of this the moment he sat down. He sat down and goes, like, does anyone here consider yourself a journalist? You know, or something like that. And as soon as that happened, it was just like, oh, I know where he's going. And um, it didn't get that bad, as, as bad as I like, as it could have gotten. Um, but... Because nobody wanted it to get, you know, from the journalism side, nobody wanted it to get bad. So, I mean, it could have gotten, if somebody wanted to push it, it could have gotten combative. But that would have been really, that would have just made the whole scene far, far worse. So, you know, I think that, you know, I think that... Well, it seemed to me that he was he was upset, obviously, at uh, what had been reported. But I think that what bothered him more was that he felt the reason it got reported at all was because of the Young Bucks, the VPs, leaking all of this information. You know that they, and I, I, as I, I guess, as I want to make ahead. abundantly clear here, I mean, listen, this stuff with CM Punk and Cole Cabana and the rumors and everything like that, I went out of my way to not talk about it because I didn't want to talk about it. I didn't want to address it. And by the time I finally on the air had to say, you know, this is what is rumored, I mean, was there anybody that hadn't heard it by then? Everybody had heard every, it by every, then. Every everybody in the company. And I story. and and by the time, you know, I heard it, I did not hear it from the Young Bucks. I mean, everybody I in the I, company. I, 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 I didn't I didn't either. And I think that that is another thing that that because because that's again like this story. It's like everybody in the company knew the everybody story by every that last time. single person it, in the company knew it was about a, this. it had been it had been a discussion point probably for for months but it, okay it had been a discussion point for months but but what happened was as soon as it really started to get heated punk got hurt so there was kind of like i mean there were people who kind of had started 
figuring it out and everything like that. And I, you know, um, but as soon as it was getting bad, I guess getting bad, Punk got hurt. So then it was just kind of like it went away. And I didn't really even think about it again until, you know, no, and, thing, and when, the, 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 the promo when Punk came back. And then, well, you know, before it, that, when Hangman did the promo, when Hangman did the promo that Punk got very upset about, if you remember when we talked about that promo, we did not explain what that promo was about. We said the promo was very interesting. And, you know, and, and, by, and we didn't we didn't say what it was about, but we knew. And when he did that promo, every single person in the company knew exactly what that promo was about. It was not a mystery. It was not something that we only would hear from from EVPs or whatever. Everybody knew what he was talking about in that promo. Every last single person. And that was months ago. But the thing, the thing with the, okay, the thing with the page thing, I mean, I, I remember saying like, ah, it's some Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels stuff, which again, to me, okay, I didn't know, but see, here's the thing. When he did that promo and they did that, I didn't know Punk was upset about the promo until he did the rebuttal three months later. I didn't either. Because, because so I didn't think, I mean, I thought it is interesting stuff, but it's like, I have said the same thing about, many promos in AEW and many promos in WWE, you know, whether, you know, there's many promos where there is an inside thing. And I kind of, when it's on the air, my belief is like, I didn't, there was nothing in that promo. They were building a match. It was like the week before a match and it was just a promo. And I just thought, Hey, they're doing a storyline. That's kind of based on insider stuff and, you know, trying to make it out like there's a personal thing that we don't know about but that's kind of there between the two of them to build the match and i didn't know i just figured they're trying to build the match and it's you know they kind of both know about it and they're working the you know i don't say working the shoot but i i had no idea from the punk standpoint that he was upset about that promo or that he didn't even know about that promo because usually the guys you know you kind of know where you're going you're not like well, it's not only that this. but like he did the promo and it was very very vague i mean if you if you knew what everybody in the company was talking about you could kind of figure out what was going on here but it was very vague i mean he just basically said like you know i don't remember what he said it was something like you talk about workers rights but you know we'll look at what you i, I don't remember what he said but it was something like that but then you know a month later Punk is doing a deal with Eddie Kingston, and Eddie Kingston's promo is, you know, everybody here thinks you're a great guy, but I know you're not. I want you out of here. And it's like, but that one was okay? Because that's essentially what Hangman said. But, right? You, you mean you mean ear earlier? Yeah, but, I mean, it's just, it's the same thing with, um, with Eddie Kingston and Sammy Guevara, you know, where Eddie got really upset at Sammy. And it's like, I thought, you know, between Danielson and, and Punk... The stuff that they were saying about Eddie, I thought was worse than Sammy. And, you know, but I just figured, well, you know, Kingston was fine with it. They're, you know, they're trying to build a match. And I thought that, you know, again, with Paige and Punk, when he did that promo, I thought they are using inside stuff, but they are trying to build a match. So it was nothing that, like, concerned me or well, my, or my was, presumption, was wrong or anything. My presumption, also based on the thing with Eddie and Sammy is, and I don't know, this is just my presumption, but... I would presume that in some of these instances, what was going to be said was cleared in advance, and so everything was okay. Whereas, presumably, in this Hangman situation, Hangman did not clear this with Punk, and well, Punk felt I, that I, he was I, blindsided I, 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 when he was out there. Evidently, evidently, that's what he said. Yes. You know, I mean, I mean, whatever it is, he was he was very upset. He waited to get his receipt. He got the receipt, but when he so, so the thing is, when he got the receipt on the show, um. That was very clear. He was not in a program with Hangman. There was no, you know, building a match with Hangman. I mean, I watched that and I go, actually, when I first watched it, as as it was going on, I didn't think anything of it. I just thought, well, you know, Hangman's going to come out. It's kind of weird because the match is Moxley, but maybe Punk is Punk and you know they're they're doing something for November or for New York afterwards, and we're setting the stage for this. And it wasn't until. He does that thing and Paige doesn't come out. It's like, okay, wait, Paige is a baby face. He's being called out and he doesn't come out and Punk keeps going about, you know, gutless and this and that. It's like, you don't do that with a baby face. So I knew then it was very clear that something was amiss and clearly it was. And I know some people were also mad about how, um, 
you know, we talked about that like something was amiss. But guess what? Something was amiss. Oh, it was definitely a miss, all right. Yeah. There's a lot of miss right now, but we'll see what happens tomorrow because they've got a show on Wednesday, and Tony's got to figure out what the hell he's going to do. Well, it may not be tomorrow. It may be Wednesday. I mean, I don't... Well, there's I a would, show, so... Well, there's a show on Wednesday. Yeah, there's a show on Wednesday, and it's going to be very interesting um, as far as... But it, it won't be addressed on the show, I don't no, think. No, 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 but it's got to be addressed. Like, this situation has to be addressed. Well, it's like what's going gonna, on? Who's coming to TV? Who's not? Who's, gonna, who's, who's willing who's, to be in the locker room with who? What's going on? Who, who's going to be? A, who's going to be a TV Wednesday? Yeah, it's got to be addressed before TV, obviously. And um, I, but I, it's again, this is one of those things where I don't expect like Tony's not. I mean, again, I I have not heard anything from from Tony, um, so I don't want to say you know like I have no knowledge of what Tony's going to do. Other than I do know that he will probably wait until everything he's not gonna he's not a guy who's gonna jump in and, and the, the reason i say this from the jeff hardy thing is the the example it's like there was like a period where it's like you know why is he saying anything why is he saying anything why is he saying anything there's a big freaking deal and then the day ca- came and he explained it because he wanted to get all the ducks in the row and not say anything without knowledge and i think that that's the key that um Whatever they do, it's not going to be, um, I mean, he's going to have, like, again, he and whoever else, they're going to have knowledge of what every single independent person and every single person um, there claims happened, and then he will have to make a decision, and it will be a very, very difficult decision to make, because unlike with Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels, which was um, where Vince didn't really make a decision, um, and Sean, I mean, Sean actually went home and then he came back. He got talked into coming back, but nobody was suspended and nobody was fined or anything like that. And that was like a big, you know, he tore his hair off, you know what I mean? And left a clump on the desk. Um, but, you know, so, so I, I don't know what the, you know, outcome will be and how it will be handled. Um, but I don't think that this will be a rushed thing and but we are going to have to wait and see and my impression is that at some point probably um but you know if it's a a legal issue you know may not be so quick um i know that there's both sides probably want to talk about it whether they do or they don't because everybody wants to get their side out um you know, with their own words as opposed to through whatever or however or whatever. Um, but, and then, like I said, there are two sides to this thing. But um, I think that, you know, what the reasons and motivations of the different people and why the punch was thrown and everything like that, we can all imagine, but we will probably find out at some point what those people involved were thinking at that moment of what happened but um it's a mess hey if you're a big fan of wrestling observer radio we got twelve thousand episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website wrestlingobserver.com if you sign up today you get access to every single one of them the 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week you can podcast them listen to them on the road at work Working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.